A D-Class prisoner enters the chamber. It is quiet, save for the subtle whipping sounds coming from a bizarre shape in the middle of the room. Upon closer inspection, it becomes clear that the floating object isn't one entity, but a mass of smaller objects, all floating and thrashing in the air. Their ammunition, of various calibers and sizes, spinning around in a spherical form. The D-Class becomes nervous, but is ordered to proceed by Foundation personnel. Slowly, inch by anxious inch, he advances closer towards the mass of bullets. His heart knocks harder against his chest with every step he takes. The thumping begins to deafen his ears. He could feel his throat tightening up as the blood rushes to his head and sweat starts to form on his brow. The sound of the thrashing gets louder, with legs trembling and fingertips numbing. The D-Class opens his mouth in an attempt to let in a gasp of air to calm his nerves. But before he could even take a full breath, and in the blink of an eye, countless bullets suddenly burst forth from the mass, spraying the D-Class relentlessly with ammunition and killing him instantly. The Foundation personnel watching this from safety note down the events as they ponder the question. Why does this mass of living ammunition act so volatile? Why are some able to approach it safely while others are killed? What is the secret of SCP-577? Classified as Euclid, SCP-577 began as one of the most mysterious objects in Foundation custody. An animated mass of ammunition, those who are able to get close enough to it observe that the plurality of bullets inside were 9mm accompanied by a selection of 10mm and 45 caliber rounds. The bullets are normally calm, moving in predictable patterns and occasionally shifting the mass to reflect other shapes, including cats and dogs. But something else about the mass concerns the Foundation more and more. The mass is growing. It is dramatically larger than it was when it was first acquired by the Foundation, and it seems to be adding approximately a thousand bullets per year. This raises the question, can it be contained permanently? Currently, it is held in a standard large containment unit, but its quarters have been reinforced with the Foundation's best steel blast shielding. Due to the danger to anyone who opens the door, the entire facility is handled with remote technology and can only be opened by approved personnel. But someone needs to check that everything is stable. The Foundation learned the hard way that entering the containment unit was a bad idea. Any Foundation staff, ranging from a high-level scientist to a standard security officer, is met with immediate hostility from SCP-577's massive bullets the second they approach the entity. The bullets shoot out from the mass with speed of a standard handgun, aiming directly at their target. This indicates that SCP-577 is intelligent, it is capable of seeing and reacting, and it hates Foundation personnel with a passion. Fortunately, the Foundation doesn't have to sacrifice its permanent staff. SCP-577 is not the first entity to react with hostility towards its captors. After all, few of the specimens are happy to be permanently contained in secure facilities. So it was determined that D-Class personnel would be sent into the facility twice a year to inspect it for any damage, making sure the entity was still secure, and test SCP-577's reaction to the presence of different people not from the Foundation staff. And that's where things got interesting. Many of the D-Class personnel didn't trigger the entity at all, resulting in neutral behavior. However, those D-Class who were initially Foundation staff and demoted due to broken policy were met with the same hostility as current staff, indicating that SCP-577 was not going to be fooled easily. The same happened with some D-Class with a specific background, who was immediately sprayed with a violent hail of bullets causing injury or death. Upon investigation, every single one of those D-Class was revealed to previously be a member of law enforcement. However, some D-Class personnel were met with a very different reaction. These people were the most likely to see the other side of SCP-577 when it reduced its hostile stance and instead took on a friendly form. Appearing as a dog or cat, it would even approach the D-Class in a welcoming manner. This was most likely to happen when the D-Class was formerly homeless or had spent time in the prison system. But one incident brought SCP-577's true nature into a new light. D-28126 was the latest unfortunate conscript to be sent into SCP-577's chamber for an annual cleaning and inspection. His duties were simple, including to inspect the walls for damage, clean out any stray material left around by the bullets firing, as well as any corpses that were left behind. 
and make any needed repairs to the walls. He would be wearing protective gear, but that wasn't always enough to protect someone from the hail of bullets, and no one knew exactly how the volatile mass of bullets would react. But from the second the D-Class entered, it was clear that this would be a very different encounter. As soon as D-28126 entered, SCP-577 seemed to take on a friendly posture. It shapeshifted into the form of a large cat and would frequently approach the D-Class while he was cleaning. The D-Class was confused at first, but soon seemed to appreciate the company. He would occasionally stop cleaning to pet the cat made out of bullets, but as the work went on, he seemed to slow down. He appeared to be crying, and eventually he stopped working entirely and slumped against the wall. The Foundation attempted communication with him, but the D-Class didn't respond. Soon, SCP-577 joined him against the wall, and the D-Class held him. His hand was guided into the mass of bullets, and it soon emerged holding a single bullet. The D-Class held the strange entity for a few more minutes, before the staff's insistence that he exit the chamber grew stronger. He eventually left, and the Foundation took him back into custody and examined the bullet he was holding. It was not a normal bullet. The bullet was moving, almost as if it was a beating heart as it throbbed up and down. Upon closer inspection, it was revealed to be covered with blood. But D-28126 had not been hit by the bullet. He was completely uninjured, but when he emerged from the chamber, his hand was covered in blood, exactly where he had inserted it into the mass of bullets. The bullet was sent to SCP facilities for testing. The blood was not a match for D-28126, but it was genetically similar, like a relative. The D-Class was brought back into the interrogation chamber and the bullet was returned to him. He was apparently linked to SCP-577 somehow, and identified himself by his name, Arturo Rojas. His interviewer, Dr. Vanderbilt, asked him to explain what happened, and Arturo explained that the mass of bullets didn't just turn into a cat. It turned into a cat he knew as a child, which had a uniquely shaped tail that he would recognize anywhere. The cat that was once helped by Arturo and his brother. Arturo was questioned why he quit working and began crying, and revealed that he heard the mass of bullets say something, barely audible. SCP-577 had whispered, I'm sorry, but what would a cat have to be sorry for? Arturo became angry when Dr. Vanderbilt questioned this, but Dr. Vanderbilt continued and conceded that Arturo recognized the cat somehow. He prodded Arturo to share the rest of his story, and Arturo eventually revealed the root of his bond to SCP-577. Arturo and his deaf brother Ricardo were homeless at a young age, after their mother threw them out. While they were living on the streets, they met a cat that they gave a little of their food to from time to time. The little cat became their constant companion. They named him Duck after Arturo's brother's favorite sign language gesture. But tragedy was just around the corner. Duck and Ricardo were inseparable, with the little cat essentially becoming a therapy pet to the boy. But one day, Ricardo encountered a police officer. The deaf boy couldn't understand the officer's orders, and the officer didn't know or didn't bother to use sign language. Ultimately, bullets were fired. Ricardo was killed. Another unarmed young man killed in a police shooting, and Duck was left alone. But the cat had one more job to do. He had led Arturo back to his brother. The area was swarming with police, and Arturo never got a chance to say goodbye. He lashed out at the only one he could, Duck. The cat tried to comfort his surviving person, but Arturo threw rocks at the cat and chased him away. He never saw the cat again, and was left alone with his grief. He saw in the news days later that the officer was cleared in the shooting. His brother was blamed for threatening the officer, and the news implied that Ricardo was a gang member. Arturo was left without closure, until SCP-577 entered the picture. Dr. Vanderbilt expressed his sympathies, but wasn't sure what any of this had to do with the entity. Arturo explained further why he started crying when he felt the pulsating bullet. He spent years sleeping next to Ricardo, and he recognized his brother's heartbeat. The bullet was his brother's heart, or at least contained his essence. And for the first time in 10 years, Arturo was able to make peace not just with the cat he had rejected out of grief, but with the brother he had lost far too long. The Foundation had answers, but they only led to more questions. Arturo had pulled a single bullet out of the massive SCP-577, and it was the one containing his brother's heart. 
Was this the bullet that killed Ricardo? Was every bullet in the mass one that killed a person? Was the mass growing with every new death? And if that was the case, did the mass contain the memory and pain of every life a bullet took? If so, that would explain the compassion the entity seems to hold for those who had been homeless or imprisoned, as well as its intense hostility for any sort of law enforcement figure. For now, SCP-577 remains stable and contained within its unit, needing only standard upkeep of its cell to avoid any breaches. But as it continues to grow, Foundation authorities worry that it may get strong enough to eventually breach containment. But this is a tricky case for the Foundation. The entity's growth is out of their control, and nothing they've done to date has stopped or slowed it in any way. It seems something on the outside is making it grow and shows no sign of slowing down anytime soon.